Hi everyone, I'm Ron Strong, and welcome back to the studio. Have you ever wanted to learn how to make a quilt but didn't really know where to start? Well, this series of videos is for you. We're going to cover everything you need to know from those first stitches to those last. If you've never made a quilt, this is the video for you. So, if you're ready to get started, let's get quilting. Now, don't adjust your computers. It is not Christmas. Uh, it is actually the middle of March. But I wanted to show you guys my very first quilt and walk you through the different parts of a quilt. When we often think of a quilt, we just think of the finished blanket, but there's actually three parts. So this is my quilt. This is the very first quilt I ever made. Let me move some of the fabric out of the way here. This is my Christmas quilt. Now I created it using fabric that I purchased at the store and I had cut into strips. Uh, the strips were I think just random widths and I had cut them not really thinking about straightness we'll say. <laughs> Uh, there was no forethought in this. I got an idea like I often do, and I wanted to create a quilt. So I did, and this was the very first thing that I made. So let's talk about the parts of a quilt. Well, you're always going to have your quilt top. Now, the top is the piece of the quilt that's most often pieced, right? It's the... Uh, when we take larger uh, sections of fabric and we cut them down into smaller pieces, we sew them together, that's called piecing. Uh, when we piece our quilt together, we make our quilt top. So this is the top of my quilt and it is pieced together. That's a good way to think about it. Now in between the top and the backing, which is our very last part, we have our second part. Uh, I've said part way too many times, but you get it. Um, and that's our bat or batting. So we have our quilt top, then we have our batting, and then we have our quilt backing. Now the backing is often made with panels of quilting fabric that are sewn together. If they're not sewn together, you can have an extra wide quilt backing, which is about 108 inches. So this is how I chose to make my very first quilt. And even then, I had no idea what a quilt top, what batting was, or a quilt backing was, but I was bound and determined to make a quilt for Christmas, and I did. And I'm extremely proud of this, and I keep it with me. Uh, through all the moves I've had over the years, this has come with me. So pretty, pretty proud of it. So to make your quilt top, you're going to want to look for quilting cotton. Quilting cotton differs from regular cotton that you find at the craft store, the fabric store, in that quilting cotton has a little bit tighter of a weave and it's just going to last longer. It also usually comes in really great colors, uh, really great patterns, and there are so many choices when it comes to quilting cotton. Uh, you'll quickly find yourself probably addicted to buying fabric, and that's okay. We love fabric, we love yarn, we love all things uh, crafty, and so we buy them. <laughs> so we're going to be focusing for this particular quilt on uh, pre-cuts. We're going to be using charm squares. Now, charm squares are five inch squares that come in packs of 42. Sometimes you'll be able to find packs that have up to 85, but for the most part, when it comes to standard uh, charm squares, they're five inches. Why are they called charm squares? I don't know. I'm sure there's a funny reason, but today we're just going to focus on because they're charming. Uh, the other pre-cut that you'll often find are layer cakes. Uh, layer cakes are 10 inch squares, so they're double the size of charm squares. Then you'll have fat quarters. Fat quarters um, are exactly what they sound like. They are a quarter yard a fabric. It's a half yard that's then cut in half. Uh, you have a small salvage along the edge that will measure 18 inches, 18 and a half inches around there, 
and then your other length, which is uh, 22 inches. So each fat quarter should measure about 18 by 22. Now, a fat quarter is going to be different than a quarter yard of fabric. A quarter yard of fabric uh, is uh, only going to be a quarter of a full cut of fabric. It won't be like this. Now, quarter... Um, Fat quarters are great because you can often find them uh, in collections. So a lot of times designers will curate and design collections of fabric. Uh, and that's kind of what I have here. Um, this is a uh, collection of uh, what we call jelly rolls. So jelly rolls... Uh, this one isn't rolled up. You can find them flat sometimes. Uh, again, about 40 to 42 strips, give or take. Um, and each of the strips measures the width of the fabric, which is about 40-ish inches, um, workable inches, and then two and a half inches wide. So whether you're going for jelly rolls or fat quarters, charm squares, layer cakes, the rule of them all is that they just make life easier. Oftentimes, one of the things that kind of makes quilting a little less approachable is this idea of buying a large yard of fabric and not knowing what to do, cutting it the wrong way, feeling like you're wasting fabric, it's like buying a new journal and not wanting to write the wrong thing on the first page and then feeling like you can't ever go back, right? So when you buy pre-cuts, it makes things a little bit more approachable, which is why we are going to focus on using charm squares. So when you're getting started, um, the biggest thing that you want to keep in mind is you want a cotton thread, uh, something that is going to work with your quilting fabric and not against it. You want to make sure that you purchase enough thread to last you throughout the project because you don't want to use multiple kinds of thread on the same quilt. You also want to ensure that you're looking for the best color of thread. You want something that's going to be neutral, that's not going to overpower the quilt. Uh, particularly, I would recommend anything in the beige, natural, and gray family, which is why I have a lot of those here, because it's what I tend to use. Now, they all have different yardage uh, from these larger spools, which have 1,200 yards, to this small spool here, which has 250 yards. I can't tell you how much you're going to use because it can vary from machine to machine and whether or not your stitches are exactly the same size as mine, um, but it's always good to err on the side of caution, purchase more than you think you'll need. So let's talk about how to make a quilt top. Now, this quilt top is really rather simple. Uh, we're essentially going to be sewing our different squares together. Uh, now I'm gonna, I got my machine here, as you can see, I'm gonna take my table off. So that way I have a little bit more working room to show you the design uh, process. So. Because this is made up of charm squares, there's going to be infinite number of ways that you can put this together. It's really going to depend on your charm square, but it's also going to depend on the color story that you're going for. Now, I would recommend, don't stress about it too much, kind of keep it random. Uh, you can just throw all the squares into the air and see where they land and see if you like that. You could take pictures of each of the squares and put them in your phone and find an app that'll randomize a pattern. What I chose to do was take a look at the charm squares that I could find in my pack. And then I chose anchor squares. So I'm gonna move this up a little bit. Now I have a square here and a square here. These are distinct colors. These are my anchor squares. Then I chose a diagonal square that's three of the same color. 
Now in your charm squares, you're most likely going to find in those packs uh, three or four matching squares. This is a great opportunity if you have four to use three here and then use the single as an anchor square on another one. Now what I did was three by three. That gives me uh, an, effectively a nine patch, which is what is called in quilting. However, uh, the way that our quilt is going to be laid out is uh, eight rows of 10. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to, uh, if you want to use this method of kind of laying out groups of them as you go, you totally can. Uh, what I would recommend is laying out your entire quilt. Now, you could use a design wall. Most likely, if you're starting out quilting, you don't have a design wall, and that's okay. A design wall is essentially a piece of flannel fabric that you toss up on the wall, and it'll hold your fabric for you, and you can see it from a distance. When I started quilting, all I had was a table and a sewing machine. I didn't really have much didn't even have a rotary cutter at the time. So what I needed to do uh, was just kind of go with it, which is what I'm kind of trying to say here. Just don't stress out about it too much. Don't put too much thought into it. Honestly, shuffle your charm squares up like a deck of cards and just sew them together. Uh, I think that that will help you to uh, fall in love with the quilting and the piecing aspect. Uh, and the designing will come later, right? Right now we're trying to learn. Uh, we're not trying to make the most beautiful quilt we've ever seen. We're trying to make a quilt top that's going to teach us the basics and the foundational steps. And in the end, we'll have something beautiful that we made because there's beauty in everything, right? So once you have your quilt all laid out and gorgeous and ready to go, you're gonna have to do some cutting. So. Um, you're going to need a couple of tools. So I'm going to get my charm squares out of the way here. And we're going to talk about uh, the basic cutting tools that you're going to need because there are some cutting requirements. So this is an Ulfa self-healing cutting mat. This is my favorite one. I like it because it's dark uh, and I can see the lines a lot better. I like cutting fabric on it a lot better. It's just personal preference. Uh, you want a rotary mat, one that's self-healing. In my opinion, they're the best. Uh, you can find them small, you can smaller than this, about half the size. You can find them as big as, you know, the whole table, whatever you decide. I like this size for simple projects and it's easier to move around. You can find rotary cutters by Ulfa as well. This is a great rotary cutter to use. Um, I particularly uh, like the Ulfa brand, but there's a number of different brands. Friskers is another one. Uh, you choose what works for you, right? Uh, 45 millimeter, you're gonna find two sizes. I believe they're 45 and 90 if I'm not mistaken. 45 is what you need. It'll cut through four or five layers of fabric. I don't recommend you start out doing that. Um, if you're nervous about using a rotary cutter, you can find gloves that are specifically made uh, to help you with using a rotary cutter. Uh, it's very important, very, 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 very important to uh, take caution and care when using these. Now last, you're going to need a see-through ruler. This is again, Ulfa. Mine has some adhesive from some different projects I've done on it. Uh, it's an older one, but it's a goodie. I love this one. It's the perfect size, six inches, uh, all the way by 12 inches. This is a standard size. This is what you're going to need. Uh, so those are kind of the basics. The, the pattern that we're following does recommend some pins, some wash away markers and things like that. Those are all things that are good to have. They're totally not required to make this quilt. I just like to put that out there because some people feel like you need to spend so much time and so much money and such a large investment in the materials to get started, and that's absolutely not true. 
to get started quilting, you need a good sewing machine. It can be in, as inexpensive as $100, uh, even cheaper than that. Find a used one. If it's in good condition, it's in good condition. My first sewing machine I got from my Nana. Uh, it can be an industrial one like I have here. Totally up to you. You'll need a good cutting mat, a good rotary cutter, and a see-through ruler. Those are your basics, right? Everything else we can add because we're going to find out whether or not it works for us. Quilting is an individual journey, one that I'm so excited to help you on today. So you're going to notice that your pattern calls for yardage. Yardage is, as I said before, when we buy our fabric in large cuts of the bolt. Uh, that's what you'll buy most often when you're starting your quilting journey, uh, if you're not using pre-cuts. Now, we're going to do what's called subcutting. Subcutting is when we take one cut of fabric that we get from the craft shop and we cut it down to what we need. So for example, I have a piece of just plain dark gray fabric here. And you can see that it was cut off the bolt because it is just a large piece of fabric. On one end, you're going to find your salvage and, uh, the other end, you'll find your selvage as well. Now the selvage end is going to be the width of your fabric. The length of your fabric is going to come with how much uh, you ended up getting from the craft store. So this is a yard, right? So it's a yard by about 40 to 44 inches. It does vary a little bit, but for the most part, you can guarantee that the selvage edge it's going to measure about 40-ish inches long. The other edge, um, which is also the stretchier end, so you'll if you never if you don't see a selvage, but you pull the fabric and it's a little more taut, that's your selvage edge. The other is going to be a little bit looser for the most part. None of these rules are set in stone, but for the most part. So with this piece of fabric, what we need to do is get it ready for quilting. Uh, this goes back to the conversation of pre-washing versus not pre-washing. Totally up to you. Do your own research and figure out what works for you. You do need to iron it. You want your fabric to be flat and ready to cut. The reason you want it flat and ready to cut is because if it's wrinkled, it's not going to lay flat and it's not going to cut straight. The reason we want straight cuts is because if our quilt isn't cut straight, then it comes out a little bit wavy. Gotta show you. This is a great example. If you look closely, you will see that uh, not all my strips are the same size. They're all a little wavy. They're all doing their own thing, going their own way. You can particularly see here, when I joined this together, there's a little, little lip of fabric. That's because there were a couple more strips that I had to cut in order to straighten it out. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> That's sarcasm. But... Uh, that's why we always iron our fabric. I didn't know that to begin with. It's good to keep in mind. Now, using your rotary cutter and uh, your see-through ruler and things, I'm going to show you how to do a quick cut. The easiest way to do this is to either fold your fabric in half or fold it in fourths. That's what I like to do. Uh, it just seems a little bit more manageable that way. Now, I'm going to use my see-through ruler. And I want this strip to be an inch and a half wide. You'll notice that most of the cuts are given an inch and a half. That's because uh, we use a quarter inch seam. And when you use a half inch, a quarter of that half goes on one side of the sewing and a quarter of the half goes on the other side. I think I said that. All right, so you'll line it up. You'll have some type of lines on your ruler. On mine, I have this uh, kind of dash line here. I'm lining it up with the straight edge. I would always recommend if you have an edge like this one that's frayed off a little bit, you can always come to the edge here, making sure that your fabric is as straight as possible on your cutting mat. Line your ruler up with the lines on your cutting mat because those are always going to be correct, right? Those aren't going to change. Your fabric might change. And then you can always trim one side to create a straight edge. Now, because I've already done that, 
I don't really have to do that. And I'm going to line up my fabric. Now I'm going to put all my hands, my entire hand, and I'm going to press down. Then I'm going to get my uh, blade out. There's a safety feature, so I'm going to get the blade out. And then I'm going to push down while moving forward. All right? I'm being slow, and I'm doing this carefully. Don't rush. Put the safety back on. Set it down. And then you can pull your fabric away. Now, I have a strip here that is exactly one and a half inches wide by the width of the fabric, which is about 40 inches. And that is exactly what I want. So once you have your charm squares laid out in the design that you want and you follow the directions about keeping them all organized and going that route, uh, and you have cut all of your yardage into the strips that we'll need later on. The next is to get our machine ready. So you're going to want to follow the manufacturer directions for your machine. Every machine is different. I can't show you how to thread your machine or how to wind your bobbin because mine is going to be different than what you have at home. It's important to look online. You can always search uh, YouTube to find more information about your particular machine, whether it be old or new. You can always look up the owner's manuals will usually be posted online by now. All of that information is out there. You can also go to your local quilt shops and ask for help. See if anyone there can help you get your machine ready and kind of show you what you need to do. Machine basics are incredibly important. I know my local craft shop has an entire class called Understanding Your Sewing Machine. They walk you through step by step what your sewing machine can do, what it can't do, and what it's going to serve you best doing. Now when it comes to quilting, the most important thing is our quarter inch seam. A quarter inch seam is the seam that we will use consistently throughout our entire project. Almost every single quilting pattern has a quarter inch seam. So it's important that we learn how to do it and we learn how to do it correctly. Now a quarter inch seam can be easily figured out by taking a ruler, I have a bright one here, and putting it up to the foot of your machine and measuring a quarter of an inch out from the needle. To do that, I recommend pulling up your presser foot and taking your needle down just until it's through the hole. Then you can line the edge of your ruler up and you can see where the quarter inch is going to lie. Now, at this point, you can just use that as a visual cue. You can place tape on your machine so you always know where the quarter inch or your machine may be like mine and have a measuring plate in it that tells you exactly where that quarter inch seam is. Now, that's not always exact, keep that in mind, but mine happens to be and that's what I follow. There also are presser foots that you can get for your specific machine that for the most part will get you to that quarter inch. Now a presser foot, I think I jumped ahead a little bit, but a presser foot is what we call this guy here. It's the actual foot that's on your sewing machine. It's called a presser foot because it presses the fabric down and together. So you have two kind of types of feeding mechanisms for your fabric. You have your presser foot and you have your feed dogs. Your feed dogs are underneath, and that's what pulls your fabric in, and then you have your presser foot up there. All right, so let's talk about how to piece our top together. First things first, you're going to lay your fabric out. Now, I'm going to be doing a very small portion compared to what you're doing. So you're going to lay out 10 rows of 8 squares. I'm going to do 3 by 3 because that's gonna be a little bit easier for me to handle and to be able to walk you through. Now, I'm just, like I said, doing this random. I'm not matching anything up. You can definitely use the technique I showed you earlier, but it's by no means required, okay? So there's my three by three outline all ready to go. You want to make sure you number each row just for visual sake. Um, it's not, super important, but it is 
a great way to ensure that you know the squares are going to be in the row that you've set up, right? So to do that, you can just lift up your squares and work either from right to left or left to right, doesn't matter, as long as you do it consistently. And you're going to move them over. So I'm gonna go from right to left, and I'm just piling them up. So now, I know that these three rows are exactly how I want them, and if I sew them in this order, then I will be set. So, to get started, we're going to start with our first row, which is this guy. And what we're going to do is sew each of our pieces together. To do that, we're simply going to match up our pinked edges. So one thing I should point out is that when you have your uh, charm square, you'll notice the edges are serrated. Those are called pinked edges. It's so that your, uh, your square doesn't unravel. You've probably noticed by now that by using these charm squares, you have just lint everywhere. That happens, it's okay. That'll go away after we wash our uh, quilt. It'll get trapped inside, not that big a deal. Uh, but just because it happens, we wanna keep in mind that our, um, the pinked edges, they can count as the edge of your fabric or you can ignore them. Either way is fine. It's a very small amount of fabric. But whatever you decide, be consistent. You'll hear me say that a lot throughout this process. Just be consistent with it. So uh, once you have you know, that all figured out, next is our sewing machine. Make sure that your sewing machine is threaded with your Coates and Clark uh, thread and your bobbin is all set and ready to go. This would be a good time to grab a scrap piece of fabric and just ensure that your, um, your, you got smooth sailing. The other thing to keep in mind is you want your stitch length to be about at set at a two. Mine is set at about 2.25 because that's what I like. But you want your machine set at a two. It's going to be the basic stitch length usually that your machine comes with, um, but a two is where I like my machine. Okay, so. I am going to get my fabric matched up. I'm going to lift my presser foot, pop it down, and then I'm going to just sew a quarter inch seam. And that's it. Now I'm going to cut my thread lift my presser foot and pull it out. Now you can see I have a nice, straight, even quarter inch seam here. When I open it, I'm not seeing any puckering. I'm seeing a nice, even seam. Now what I'm doing right here is called finger pressing. This just helps me to see what I've done. All right, so next I am going to sew my next square to this pair. So this was my first, my second, now this is my third. So what I'll do is I'll match up that side there. Now I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna sew. Now, I did that again. If you look super closely, you can see that my charm square did shift a little bit and it's not totally straight. That's okay, that's fine. We're not gonna worry about that. We're gonna worry about making sure that this quarter inch seam is as, uh, it's as good as we can get it without stressing over it being perfect, right? Does that make sense? So I have my very first row done. Now, when we're looking at the back and we're seeing our seams, uh, often when we're pressing, which is ironing, our seams are either going to go to the left or to the right. There is a debate about open seams. We're not going to worry about that right now. 
each row should be pressed in the opposite direction. So row one, I'm pressing everything. If I'm looking at it the way I wanna look at it, I'm pressing everything to the left. Row two, to the right. Row three, to the left. You want to uh, set it like that because um, we wanna nest our seams. Now, I am not a ironer while I'm piecing kind of person. Uh, it, I just don't have the room for it. So what I use is this little handy dandy tool from Clover. Uh, this is a seam roller, that's it. So what I do is I finger press and get the seam where I want it, and then I'm gonna go over it with my seam roller. And all this is gonna do is really crease that fabric much better than my finger will. And now it's ready. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this wrong side up. That way, I'm able to see which direction those seams are sewn in. Second thing, you'll notice that while I was sewing, I was going pretty slow. Uh, I was not pushing my industrial machine to the thousand stitches per you know, minute it can do, whatever it is. Uh, I was going nice and slow and staying in control. That is what I want you to repeat to yourself while you're working through this quilt top. Nice and slow and staying in control. Don't feel like you have to rush through this. You don't have to, that's the beauty of it. You wanna take your time because there's nothing worse than finishing a row and then realizing that you made a mistake halfway through because you were rushing, right? So take it slow, stay in control, and hopefully you won't make any mistakes. But, all right, so that's row one. You're gonna go ahead and do all of your rows. I'm gonna let you do the entirety of your quilt. So you're gonna go stop the video here, go and sew 10 rows, eight squares each, and then when you come back, I'm gonna show you how to nest your seams and sew those rows together into a finished quilt top. All right, so once you have your squares sewn into rows, it's time to connect the rows. Now obviously your rows are gonna be a lot longer, you're going to have a lot more seams to nest and match up, but as I said a little bit earlier, go slow, Take control, you got this. Okay, so we're gonna grab row one and row two, and we're gonna work on those first. So what I would recommend is grabbing some pins, or you can use these little like alligator clips. Uh, what I like to do is I match up my seams, and what you wanna do is kind of like, shimmy the fabric until you feel the seams match up. And it's very obvious when they don't match up and when they do match up. And then you wanna make sure that the top of your fabric, so this edge here, you wanna make sure that that's good. And then you're just gonna clip it or pin it, whatever you wanna do. I like the clips because they're a little bit easier for me to handle than pins are. So I'm gonna do the same on the next seam and you would do this all along your fabric uh, or all along your row. So row one and two will have a number of these clips all along. Now what we're going to do is we're going to place our row one and two into our machine and we're going to start sewing. So with the pins and the clips, we don't have to worry about holding the seams. We go nice and slow. And then when our clip comes, we just take it out or the pin. You don't want to ever sew over your pins. And then we just kind of hold that seam down and we go over. Now we're going to keep going until we get to the next clip. We're going to stop. We're gonna pull that clip out. And I need to straighten this square a little bit. So what I'm gonna do, because I don't, it's not straightening how I want, I'm gonna slowly sew until I get to the point 
where that seam is locked in with my needle. And I'm gonna match up my square and sew all the way to the end. And that's it. You can see that I have my seam all the way across. And when I open it, we're sewn together. Now again, you're gonna have longer rows, but the concept is exactly the same. Now I'm going to grab my next row here. I'm gonna nest those seams, and I can usually feel it right away. And then I'm gonna clip them. Same thing there on the second one. And again, you would repeat this process with every single row. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and sew straight across. And then my clip. will sometimes have to just rearrange the fabric, and that's okay. That's normal. And we just keep going. And that, friends, is how you will sew your rows together. Not too hard, is it? Next, let's talk about our borders. So, this is one of our borders, right? So we have three borders. Here are my three borders. We have a three and a half inch, one and a half inch, two and a half inch. And the pattern gives the exact number of each that you'll need. Now after we've cut these out, we have strips that measure the width of our strip by about 40 to 42 to 44 inches. We're going to need to do two things. First, we need to cut these salvages off. We never want to sew the salvage. We want to get rid of those. You can do that one of two ways. You can grab your cutting mat and do that when you trim your strips, or you can do what I'm going to do, which is just match them up and cut. That same thing. So once you have all of your salvages cut off your strips, you're going to sew those strips together end to end. So all of your strips are going to sew together. You're going to do what we did when we sewed our um, quilt top. So again, mine is mini, so my measurements are going to be off. You'll follow the measurements that are written in the pattern. That's what you want to do, but you're going to sew these together. That's going to create a very, very long strip. One that obviously you don't want to sew with because it's going to measure over a hundred inches in length. What you'll do then is subcut. Now, if you remember before, subcutting is when we cut one length down to multiple lengths. Once you have all your pieces sewn together, you'll subcut those into the measurements given in the pattern. Uh, so the one in a quarter. So the one and a half inch strips will cut down to 40 and 47 inches. What that's going to do is give you the width and the length that you need to sew the borders onto your piece. Now, they're going to be a little bit longer, which is what you want because you always want to, you always, you can't. So they're going to measure a little bit longer, which is what you want because you can't add fabric once you cut it, right? So. All you'll do to sew your borders on is you're gonna start with your one and a half inch borders, half inch borders and you'll lay the right side on the right side of your fabric. Now I like to do this with my border facing up instead of the wrong side of my quilt top. It's just easier that way. And when you're done, you'll have this beautiful seam. And then when we open it up, we have this gorgeousness here. I love this. 
So then what we would do is we would grab our outer border, which is our three and a half inch border. The two and a half inches for our binding, which we'll talk about in another class. So once we have that, what we would do, I haven't trimmed the salvage off this yet, but that's okay, is we would sew this to the edge of that first border. We would press all the way around. And then when we open it, we would wind up with something like this. How cool does that look? Well, that's it for this part one of learn to make a basic quilt with squares. We did a lot and we learned a lot. And that always comes with its own set of challenges. But we always meet those challenges. And today, I think we did that. If you still have questions, don't be afraid to go back and rewatch this video as many times as you need and follow it step by step. You can also read the blog post, which has handy tips and tricks to work your way through this pattern. So I hope you had a good time. Thanks for coming to the studio. My name is Ron Strong. Happy quilting, and we'll see you next time.